Well, friends, welcome again to another time of worship. I am so excited to be able to to join in this worship with you today. And I actually get to do that today, uh, for I am not going to be preaching today. We have a wonderful gift in store for all of you. The uh, Reverend John Warren is going to be bringing us an amazing message. And I I cannot tell you how excited I am uh, to share the pulpit, uh, or the, I guess, the invisible pulpit, since we don't preach in front of a pulpit for this. but to share this space with uh, someone whom God has has worked um, so so powerfully in uh, in so many different settings. So, John, thank you so much for sharing your word and your passion for ministry and for uh, for for God with us. What what a gift it is! As we begin our time of worship, we want to invite you to take a moment and prepare your heart for worship. Um, maybe that's just lighting a candle. Maybe it's taking a few deep breaths. Whatever you need to do. Make sure you're ready for what's coming because it's going to be powerful and God is going to work miracles through it. I am certain of this. And while you're preparing for worship, take a moment if you don't mind and go to wimberlyumc.org slash connect and fill out our connect card. This is just our way of being able to to check in with those who are worshiping with us online, um, to have a a little bit more um, active relationship with you, um, and to invite you into further ministry together. That's what we're supposed to do, right? We are supposed to be a part of bringing God's kingdom to this place. We want to make sure that you're you're equipped with what you need to do to do that well, uh, wherever your context is. And so please fill out that connect card at wimberlyumc.org slash connect. With that in mind, let us pray. (sighs) Holy God, thank you so much that we are able to worship you in so many different ways. Thank you that you are powerfully working through um, even this this digital means that uh, just a few years ago wouldn't be seen as, as viable worship at all. And yet, God, you are moving mountains through this ministry. So God, thank you that we are able to worship in this way and that you are present here just as you are present in, in, in real life, in, in physical contact, in the ways that we might normally think of, of worship together. God bless this time. May we meet you here. May we leave this time and space knowing that our God was present during it. And God, may we be changed by this time. All this we ask and we pray in your name. Amen. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, There where the blood of the Lamb was spilled Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon and cleanse within Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that is greater than all our sin. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be today. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvel is infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see 
his face. Will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Friends, as we prepare for offering, uh, just just a reminder that this is so much more than just the, the monetary gifts that you give. We're called to give to God so much more than that. So take a moment as we pray and ask God what your offering should be today. We're going to throw up a slide here in a moment that shows ways to give specifically to this church. Pray to God to ask how you might do that. But pray also to ask how you might engage outside of just your monetary giving. Where God might be calling you to take a step in faith and to give more to see God's kingdom come. May that be all of our prayers today. Let us pray. Holy God, receive now our offering in the many forms it comes. Bless it immensely and use it to bring your kingdom. All this we ask and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I try to stand my ground I try to understand But I can't seem to find my faith again Like water on the sand Or grasping at the wind I keep on falling short So please be my strength Please be my strength Cause I don't have any more I don't have any more I'm looking for a place where I can plant my faith One thing I know for sure That I cannot create it, that I cannot sustain it It's your love that's keeping me So please be my strength Please be my strength You don't have any more Cause I don't have any more I fought the good fight of faith I pray your glory shines In this doubting heart of mine And all would know that you That you are my strength You are my strength you and you alone You keep bringing me back home You are my strength You are my strength 
bringing me back home. It's you and you alone. You keep bringing me back Hear the word of God from John chapter 12, starting with verse 20. Some Greeks were among those who had come to the worship at the festival. They came to Philip and were from Bethsaida in Galilee and made a request. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip told Andrew and Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Jesus replied, The time has come for the human one to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives in the world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will be also. My Father will honor whoever serves me. Now, I'm deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time? No, for this is the reason I have come to this time. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard and said, It's thunder. Others said, An angel spoke to him. Jesus replied, This voice wasn't for my benefit, but for yours. Is that the end? Now is the time for judgment of this world. And now this world's ruler will be thrown out. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. He said this to show how he's going to die. The word of God. When I was uh, growing up on the east side of Houston, our church, Jacinta City United Methodist, was uh, uh, a very active church with the youth. Our youth counselors were Elsie and Evelyn Sammons. Uh, they met us on Tuesday nights uh, in the sanctuary, darkened sanctuary of the church for prayer time. We would gather in the, in the circle and, and sit cross-legged on the floor with a, a large candle in the middle and, and the lights lowered and, and all 14 of us would take turns praying. Uh, it, it was an interesting time. Uh, we prayed for one another. We prayed for broken relationships, the usual teenage things. Uh, we prayed for life decisions uh, we prayed about the draft. We prayed for our brothers in Vietnam and the surrounding areas. We, we couldn't speak to them like uh, we do today uh, over the Internet or, or uh, uh, iPhone and, and that sort of way. We, we had to wait for the mail. And we had fa family members who were be were uh, stationed in far off countries and and the mail was slow and if you were like my brother you didn't write very often anyway we had family members battling cancer neva's mother died of cancer cancer and she and her brother greg had to move away to live with with family elsewhere it, it was a time of change 
and unrest. Elsie's mother passed of cancer also. The Chicago 7 was not a movie. It was happening at that very moment on our TVs. Uh, there were riots between police and war protesters. Four students were dead. Four dead in Ohio was not just words in a song. It was our lives. We even had a riot in our own high school. And so we prayed. And we prayed every Tuesday night. Elsie made wooden crosses on uh, lanyards with uh, leather straps. He and his wife would wear them each week. And on our birthdays, they would take one of their crosses off and give it to us and, and emphasize that these crosses have been with them through some tough times. It was a very exciting moment when you received your cross. And as our birthday came around, mine was in, is in October, uh, I had to wait and wait. And so I waited anxiously to get my cross. It, it meant that I was part of something uh, so important. It meant that I belonged to something larger than myself and a gr greater power. Well, let's get into the word. From the very first words from John, the gospel, we find that there is something very different about this book. It, it's not written like the other books. Um, the very opening words you, you read, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. What did he say? This, it, it, this is going to be a different book. It's going to be a challenge. The author's goal was not to write an accurate telling of Jesus' life from his point of view. Wesley even called it the, the spiritual gospel. John is more artistic in his writing. His words are more impressionistic and symbolic and, and telling the, of the saving story of the Son of God dwelling among humans. Dwelling among humans. I guess you might even say it's sort of a dramatization or I would look at it this way. Are there any art, artists watching or listening? When, when you paint, there are times when you get so involved with an area of detail that, that your focus is on that, that certain part. But, but from time to time, you have to stand back and, and get the whole picture and see how it is fitting in with the whole. To me, the Gospel of John is like that. He, he paints a, as a whole, he paints in broad strokes, telling the story of the life of, of Christ in, in a wide angle lens. Things are placed differently and most certainly in an artistic way. It was a way of telling the story of Jesus. And John draws you into the story and makes you think. Certainly has a message to tell. So let's take a look at our scripture for today. First, let's step back and get the broad view. Jesus went to his friends Mary and Martha's house, raised his brother, their brother from the dead. Um, then he returns and celebrates with them. It's a big event. Mary anoints his feet with an expensive ointment. 
and tears flowing together with her hair on his feet. And, and dis- disciples, some of the disciples complain about the extravagance. And Jesus tells them uh, to, to leave her alone, that she is preparing him for his burial. Now, you know, I, if I were a disciple, I'd be really confused. I'm sorry. Uh, what's he talking about? Um, if, if only they had Twitter in those days, the keys would be burning up. Who is this that raised someone from the dead? And, and, and now he's, he's heading to Jerusalem. Could this be the Messiah, the one who will free us from Rome? Will, will there be an uprising? Will he bring us out from under the Romans? But he keeps talking about dying. What's going in on here? News was out. Uh, that Jesus was in Jerusalem and crowds were waiting for his arrival. You know, Sandra and I have worked through a long process of remodeling our house. Finding an architect took almost a year. Then working with him took uh, almost a year. And, And then searching for a builder it was so hard to find someone. People would come and give us estimates and then we would call them and never hear from them again. We sort of kissed a lot of frogs uh, before finally finding the, the one that we settled on. After six months, we finished our house and have turned the corner and have finished the building stage and are moving on to unpacking. In fact, I didn't find the shoes I'm wearing uh, today until this morning when I realized, oh, they're not in a box. I put them in a garbage bag. And there were all my shoes. We have all experienced this. We've been busy. We've been caught up in something when we realize that we finished or that it's time to leave it behind. At that point, we take a deep breath uh, and we commit ourselves to the new course of our action. We excel and start down the new path. In the Gospel of John, in chapter 11 and 12, it's a little like that. They stand kind of at a bridge between Jesus' ministry and his hour. The message today comes from the time between the public ministry Jesus of Jesus and the hour of his death. We can almost hear Jesus take a deep breath. We can see him pause when he sees the symbolic meaning of uh, of a different kind of people coming to him. Instead of directly addressing their concern, Jesus turns and looks to the task before him. When he tells the Father to to bring glory through the cross, it's a dramatic event in history, and God himself speaks Uh, a reply in in the voice of thunder. You know, Will Rogers said, you've got to go out on a limb sometimes because that's where the fruit is. In modern times, if if we move to some place away from home, there's always the good chance that we can go back. Uh, We lived on Buttercup for six months. We can turn and go up that hill anytime we want to. But for our ancestors who came from Europe or Great Britain, they hopped on a ship and they stepped out and climbed out on the end of the branch. Many of them could never went back. They went out on a limb. But their trip to America resulted in, in a new opportunity uh, to become part of this country. When Jesus walked this earth, the Jewish people, anyone who was not Jewish was considered to be part of 
the Greek world. That was a general term often used for all foreigners. There was essentially only two groups of people, Jewish and Gentile, or Jewish and foreigners. Most theologians believe that the reason that these certain Greeks in our scripture today, it was a term for foreigners. They came to Andrew and Philip. They probably went to them because their names sounded more Greek. And so they went to them. And then in turn, Philip went to, to Jesus and before Jesus and went and asked, told Jesus that there were certain Greeks here wanting to speak to him. And Jesus' response was kind of to, to, to take a deep breath and, and commit himself to the cross and, and started the new course of action that he had been teaching the disciples and healing the people that, that had been his ministry. But now something changed. Suddenly everything changed and, and it was time for him to enter the glory of the cross. John helps us understand uh, this change by telling us in the first part of the gospel that Jesus' hour had not come. By telling us that his hour now had come. We read in the second chapter of John, Jesus said to uh, his mother, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Uh, There were... Two examples of of John in chapter 7, when Jesus said, he said, my time has not come, yet your time is always ready. And then again, he said, therefore, they spoke to to take him, but no one laid hand of him because his hour had not come. Finally, in chapter 820, Uh, These words are are spoken by Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple and and no one laid hands on him for his hour had not come. After hearing that his hour had not come so many times, but today suddenly we read in John 12, 23, Jesus replied, now the time has come for the son of man to enter into his glory see, four times Jesus reports that the hour had not come. Then in verse 23 today, Jesus said the hour had come. So what was so different? The difference was that certain Greeks sought him out. That's the big difference. Because we don't even know if uh, he met with them. We hear the conversation between Philip and Philip tells Andrew And Philip tells Jesus, so who are these Greeks? Well, some say the Greeks indicate that they were foreigners or or non-Jewish people in the world, uh, Gentiles. And others say say that they were Jews that had scattered in the world and, and they had returned. And he is gathering them all like a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wing. That's his message. He began to to reach beyond his own Jewish community to the Gentiles and to the rest of the world, to all of mankind. And that, my friends, is the good news. Jesus Christ came, lived, died, and rose for you and I. That even though we have gone through so much this year, even though our lives have been turned upside down as those people years ago, we too have a Savior, and His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger King of glory, King above all kings Who shall
shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. It's the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. You would take my place You would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for our chaos back in order who makes the orphan a son and a daughter the king of glory the king of glory and who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sunshine in all of its brilliance King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. To take my place, that you would bear my cross. Down your life that I might be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. So worthy is the Lamb who slain. Worthy is a king who conquered the grave. Worthy is a lamb who was slain. Worthy is a king who conquered the grave. Worthy is a lamb who was slain. Worthy is a king who conquered the grave. Worthy is a lamb slain you're worthy as a king who conquered the grave you're worthy as a lamb who was slain oh worthy 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 this is amazing grace this is unfailing love you would take my place and you would bear my cross and you laid down your life that I would be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done let us bow for the benediction gracious God we thank you for the message of John for the word that we hear today that we are not left that we are included that we are part of the sheep of Jesus Christ Go with us as we go out into the world and share this news, this good news, that you too are children of God. May God bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen.